Yo, what is going on, homies? It's your boy Stumped back from the Oatbeak DC video, and in today's video, we're taking all the Rush pseudo characters in the game, putting them onto a tier list for you guys to break down the best Rush ability to the worst Rush ability. And look, this one is a bit of a tricky one because some Rush abilities are very similar to other characters. So the way I'm going to grade this is basically on the character and their Rush ability, not in the sense that the character might do something better in their special, but the requirements that actually they really require to get said rush ability now all the rush characters in the game are some sort of exclusive legend we have eight super sugos and one anniversary rush character so all of them are very hard to attain and if you haven't picked up the tablets which are very very hard to find you have basically have to summon five of these characters to max out this particular ability however the ability basically just brings raw damage it does obviously increase their pvp stats and stuff like that but raw damage is what rush provides and with the addition of this particular um, ability since the ninth anniversary, it has increased damage exponentially. But the only place it's really seen a lot of play is obviously in Super Boss Kazuna, the 10 star Kazuna, as well as stuff like PK 150. It can be very, very handy in. So if you guys don't have these abilities maxed out, don't stress. But we are going to talk about them and rate them from the best to the worst. If you guys agree with me, let me know in the comment section below. Remember, this is subjective. This is just my personal opinion playing the game. The characters that I like to use in terms of their power, how good they are, and getting a feel for what they actually do. If you guys disagree, let me know down below as well. But while you're down there, build the like button for me. Hit the subscribe button. Do all that good stuff. Go check out the Super Tenem and the Final Tap tier list as well. Make sure to go let me know in the comment section what you guys think is the best Rush Tandem or Final Tap ability as well. With that said, let's dive into the tier list. All right, so here we are with the nine Rush characters in the game as of July 2024. Starting at the ninth anniversary Rush Sanji, finishing at the 10th anniversary Super Super FS being Luffy, Shanks, and Ace. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from number nine, make it all the way up to number one, and rate them from, I guess, the worst to the best. And obviously, this will be subject to change as we move down the line because... To make a rush ability work, most of the time, you have to have particular requirements to actually get this off. You need particular characters to work on the team, and like I said, we're going to be ranking, going to be ranking these particular characters on how they sort of synergize with other units in the game, and where they kind of work, um, and or how they kind of work with their particular rush ability. So, we're going to start it off at number 9, the worst, I guess, it's hard to say that because I just don't... Like, the, the difference between these Rush abilities and where you, what they provide for their team. They're all very, very powerful. Any character that has Rush is always going to be very, very good because Rush is still very, very limited in the game. But the character that I'm going to put at number 9 is Cross Guild. Um, Cross Guild, look, they're a very, very good, powerful character. I love running Cross Guild. They're, like, very, very fun. The downside to Cross Guild is you need two of the following characters on the crew. Galdino... Moji and Richie, Kabaji, Alvida, Daz Bones, Zoro, Perona, or Shanks. Now, besides the last three, Zoro, Perona, and Shanks, the other characters basically have no representation in the game. Nothing too crazy, obviously, besides the new rare recruits that came alongside Cross Guild. Like, you have, obviously, Shanks characters that work exceptionally well, and obviously, you have a lot of very good Zoros that can work exceptionally well, but nine times out of ten, you're not going to be running them on the same team, and if you are, you're going to be running them on a slasher team where... Roger and Odin's rush is going to provide a little bit more. The upside to Cross Guild's rush ability, though, is they can be used as the first tapper in the chain. I love this ability to be able to use tap to tap first. And if you do get their pseudo triple special off, they are a chain boundary unit, so it does work exceptionally well with this ability. Their rush is going to give up to a 1.9 times attack boost, adding 0.6 to the chain multiplier, costing you 15,000 HP every single tap, maxing at 8 taps. So there's the downside to rush, obviously, it does cost HP, but nowadays with the power creep and the amount of HP we have, like, it's not that big of an issue. The finished tap effect works for slashes and driven characters, so it is based on classes and no colors. Uh, the finish tap multiplier is 0.8, which is very, very low. However, the first tap is 0.5, maxing at 0.1. And remember, you can tap eight times, maxing this out, like I said, at a, uh, what, a 0.6 times chain multiplier, which is very, very strong. But the downside, as I mentioned, to Cross Guild is that they just kind of have been replaced by another rush character. Well, not replace, but like just have another rush character that works a little bit better than them that doesn't need the crazy requirements of those characters. Like I said, though, if you put it together and you utilize 
uh, cross guild with say Shanks and Zora or you use the Moria Peroni unit works great with them. You can do some fun stuff there with driven to more driven builds. Um, but if you're doing, if you are doing that more driven build, there is just other characters that you kind of want to use in that regard. And they're driven. It's just, it's nowhere near where it needs to be. If you compare that to slashes and if you are using slashes, like these two rushes are just, they're just infinitely better. Unfortunately, looking at number eight though, we have the covenant and all powerful, Rush Kaido. Kaido is the only strength rush character, and that's what makes him so valuable and so strong. But his rush also buffs powerhouse units. Now, just like Cross Guild, the big thing that I find that Kaido struggles with is his requirements. He has to tap second or third in the chain to get his rush ability off. And you also need two of the following characters being King, Jack, Queen, Orochi, Lin Lin, Conjuro, Fuku Juju. Ulti, Page One, Black Maria, Who's Who, and Sasaki. So all of the Beast Pirates, and then you include uh, Lin Lin, Orochi, and Kanjuro in there. Um, none of these characters have crazy representation for the strength builds. Like, there obviously are some, don't get me wrong. Obviously, the rare recruits that came alongside him. You have stuff like um, the strength ulti. I guess you could argue you do have Who's Who, and you do have Jack. Uh, and then for the powerhouse side, you have obviously the Super Sugo Big Mom with Alba, who is king, and you can, you can do some stuff there. But the downside to Kaido is because you are tapping second or third in the chain, trying to chain that into a Super Tandem can be very, very challenging. Having the ability to rush into a Super Tandem into a final tap is the best way to get more majority of your damage. Well, from what we've seen, to get the highest amount of damage, that is that is the best way to do it. Not always, but for the sake of this particular team, that's how you're going to want to do it. And to get a Super Tandem ability to proc before tapping second or third means that you basically have to tap with Kaido third to get the Super Tandem before it, or utilize Kaido as the Super Tandem into the third tap and activate Super Tandem. That's losing out on everyone else getting these particular buffs. It makes the team very, very wonky. And the thing that I do find to Kaido is if you are synergizing him up with the best strength units in the game that are also driven in Powerhouse, like the Blackbeard Pirates is the, the best Super Tandem. You do have Toby Ropo now as well, which is a pretty good Super Tandem unit for Kaido. And you do have the free-to-play lead performance that can work. But if you were looking for like the best option in terms of damage, the Blackbeard Pirates are the ones that do it the best. And trying to find a way to bring... Blackbeard, Kaido, and then two pirates from their respective crews. It just gets very, very hard to build with their actual team. However, as I mentioned, Kaido does 20,000 HP cost for seven rushes, maxing the final tap at a 1.0 multiplier, 1.1 per tap, and the uh, first tap at 0.5, maxing at a 2.0 successful chain and, and a 1.5 attack boost, re reaching that two times attack. So he's very, very strong. For strength-based teams, however, powerhouse teams, they're just not there. Powerhouse is just not, not that good, just like Driven, unfortunately. Another character that taps second or third and is going to take the seventh spot is Roger and Odin. Roger and Odin came out not long after Kaido being the New Year's legend. And the reason I have Roger and Odin a little bit higher than what Kaido is, is because of their requirements of their Rosh units. They also have to tap second or third, which again can make using Super Tandems a little bit more challenging. Obviously, like if you have a character that you want to use that has a super tandem that doesn't include Roger and Odin, it is going to be very, very challenging to do that. However, there are ways of going about it and sort of utilizing your super tandem later with a final tap because Slashers have Yamato and Quick has Yamato and Zora Sanji and stuff like that. Their requirements are two of the following characters being Rayleigh, Gaban, Crocus, Shanks, Buggy, Momo, Toki, Hiori, Sukiyaki, Kinemon, Kanjuro, Izo, Raizo, Okiku, Ashura Doji, Dogstorm, Cap Viper, Kawamatsu, Denjiro, Edward Nugate, and Portagas DA. So as you can as you can tell, there's a lot more characters than what these two units are providing here. And that's what makes them so so much more valuable with the rush ability than something like Cross Guild, is because they can also use Shanks. And so if you're looking comparing the pair, like you've got Shanks there, you've got Ace there, and it's like, okay, well, why would I use the Cross Guild Rush when I could just use Roger and Roger and Odin's? They will max out at a uh, 2.0 rush attack, just like Kaido. They boost Slasher, Striker, and Quick units, which is great. Up to a 0.5 chain multiplier. Rush finish tap at 1.0. First tap at 0.5, which makes them very, very strong. They also take 20,000 damage every tap, maxing at 7 taps. The upside to Roger Odin, the, the reason I have them a little bit higher than Kaido, is purely because you have units like Zoro Sanji. You can also use Momo. 
And then you have Yamato as well, where they all synergize really well into the Super Tandem Rush and Final Tap. The coalition of units between the Quick Slasher team, it's much easier to build for than what the, the Strength team's doing. And that's sort of why Kaido has to fall a little bit lower than Roger and Odin. Cross skill, honestly, like I would say it's probably a little bit, little bit easier to build than what Kaido is, but what Kaido is providing isn't as good what well, is better than what the cross skills providing because you have Roger and Odin in the game and Roger and Odin are basically just going to be a straight replacement for something uh, like cross guild. The next unit we have on the on the tier list taking the sixth spot and people aren't going to be happy about this one because a lot of people like this unit a lot more than what they like um, the six plus count type and that's going to be Rush Gear 5. Rush Gear 5 is phenomenal. Uh, he does... He's a very different rush to everyone else, besides the anniversary exclusives and his 6-plus counterpart, of course. Uh, but the reason that he's so different is because he has to tap last. For his requirements, you have to be in the Gear 5 state, which is very easy to do. You just need uh, three Straw Hat characters, or die, basically, which is really funny. Uh, but if you have three Straw Hats, you can activate his EX, turns him into his Gear 5 state. And then as long as you tap last, the 6th tap you get access to his rush ability. There's no character requirements. There's nothing like that, which is fantastic. Besides, I guess, the three straw hats if you're building out the team that way. But it's great because you can activate his rush purely off the basis of just being in the gear five form. However, you do lose a final tap ability. Unlike these other characters that can rush into a super tandem and then into a final tap, gear five doesn't have that luxury. What gear five does have, the luxury that Psy... Well, I say luxury. I'm going to make this a bit bigger while we talk. Um, I say luxury, but the luxury that Psy has is they don't really have any crazy final tap legend that works better than what Gear 5 is actually doing. Gear 5's rush is so powerful that it can replace a final tap and just do more damage because Psy doesn't really have that much at their disposal. At max, it costs you 20,000 HP, which is massive, just like um, Kaido and Roger Odin. You can tap five times. However, your chain growth is 0.2. The self rush attack is two times. Each successful chain adds 0.2 up to 2.6 as he ends on a three times finish tap multiplier. This is going to just triple whatever chain you finish at. And this is disgusting because some final tap units like Yamato for Sai doubles the chain. So if you're having a unit that rushes into a triple you're automatically doing more damage on top of all the rush shenanigans even though it's just for luffy himself obviously if you had this first and then you go into the rest of your units and you final tap that's going to do a lot more damage and yes i do think eventually we are going to have a side character that has a crazy ass final tap that is going to replace what gear 5 is doing but right now Sai really doesn't have that luxury and if you are using a final tap you are using the rush of gear 5 which is hilarious the next unit we're going to talk about taking the Covenant number 5 spot is the very first Rush character, actually, that is Rush Sanji. And you guys might be thinking, damn, Stump, Rush Sanji taking the 5th spot as now that he's a year old? Well, the upside to Sanji is, just like Cross Guild, he can actually tap first and activate the Rush. This is a really strong ability because it's very easy to then chain him into a super tandem. It's very easy to utilize the power of that Rush ability for the rest of your team. And it's just a really nice synergy for uh, what he's providing to Free Spirit and Dex teams. Another upside to him, the reason I have him so high, is that he actually buffs Strength, Dex, and Quick as his finished hat. Rather than doing two classes and a color, this guy you can kind of throw onto a strength team, throw onto a quick team, and he's actually going to be a very powerful rush ability for all those types. The downside to him, though, is you do need a recovery tandem or one orb, and you need two of the following characters on the crew. You can use any of the straw hat characters, which is great, any of the Vin smokes as well, uh, except, nope, Judge is there as well. So you can use Judge and Yamato is included too, which is really, really nice. So he generates one, or, uh, sorry, recovery orbs. Tandem orbs are pretty easy to get with um, the characters he synergizes with. And then with Wano orbs, he does he can get those pretty easily as well. His rush attack goes up to a 2.0 attack and a 0.8 chain. It's pretty much exactly the same as what Cross Guild's doing. However, he does it for three colors. And that's why I think Sanji's probably a little bit higher on this tier list. He's a free spirit character, so he can synergize very, very well with a lot of other characters in the game. But he doesn't have to give that to Free Spirit. Free Spirit is just an amazing class and it has access to a lot of very, very good characters. And that's what makes Sanji, in my opinion, just a little bit a little bit better for his rush ability. Plus, 
He's a chain boundary unit, just like cross kill, but he's just a straight chain boundary unit and a chain boosting unit. So him tapping first activates that chain, and then that second rush, he's hitting with that massive chain that he has provided in, from his from his special, which is a great synergy for, for the character. So taking the fifth spot, I'm pretty comfortable putting him there. Um, I really like what Sanji's doing. The next one, I, I know for a fact, this, this one, this one right here is going to piss a lot of people off. Next, I've got... Gear 5, 6 plus. Now, Gear 5, 6 plus obviously ran Riot as the most disgusting unit in the game for a very long time. Maxing this guy's Rust was so beneficial for Grand Party, for, for PvP. And what it does is it does exactly the same thing as what uh, this guy right here does. However, you do need two of the following characters on the crew. Uh, and tap last. So obviously with this guy, you had to go into gear 5. This guy already is gear 5, so you don't have to worry about that. You just need two of the following characters, being any of the Straw Hats, Yuritus Kid, Law, Yamato, or Momo. Now, this is very, very easy to do. To get these characters like on the team, it's disgustingly easy, especially because he's super EX, which makes every super type a super type. He's super EX. You need three of these characters anyway. So you are basically just shoehorned into bringing him no matter what. He reduces the HP by 20,000 five times, exactly the same as this particular gear five here. And he can rush up to five times with the tap multiplier at three times. You're probably thinking, Stump, he does exactly the same as what this guy does. So why is he higher up on the tier list? Well, you can use him on a side team and just directly replace this guy. He has a higher stat, so he's going to hit harder. He can provide an attack boost or an orb boost. He does some very nice stuff with his EX. And honestly, he's just can or in situations where you are looking at the rush ability he can be a better unit on top of that if he's a captain and you bring one of every color he has rainbow damage and this is what makes him so incredibly powerful for his rush ability if you build out a team that has one of every type which by the way his captain ability just buffs the entire team like it doesn't actually matter you can just bring any unit you want and he's going to buff them as long as you have the five colors on the team being basically himself and then the three primary colors and ints you can easily get a rainbow damage, which means his rush ability is hitting for super effective against all types. That means it doesn't matter what you're going up against. If you are versing a quick box, if you're versing um, a uh, dex boss, if you're versing a side boss, like, it doesn't matter what you're versing, this guy is going to hit with super effective against all types, and that's what makes his rush so damn val valuable. Again, just like this guy, you do lose the final tap of... Um, the Psy team, but again, Psy doesn't really have that crazy final tap to make it more valuable than what this guy's actually providing. However, he does fall off a little bit purely because he has he has to tap last, and team building for him, it can be very, very finicky for new players, and even for endgame players, it can just be something that's just a bit of a headache. Character that's going to go just above him is my boy, Shanks. Shanks is taking the number three spot, and look, if you guys, no matter what order you guys have the anniversary Super Sugos in, it's really not going to matter to me too much because, like, they're all just so fantastic. The reason I have Shanks third is because, obviously, you have two other characters to compete with. You have the Gear 5 6+, plus, you have Gear 5 6-star tapping last as a crazy final tap unit. Plus, Psy doesn't really have a crazy final tap that's going to replace any of these guys. But what Shanks can do, he can tap as the last unit as well, just like the Gear 5s can. And that's why I think he's a little bit better, because not only can he tap last, but he can also tap first. If you tap first or sixth attack, you can activate the rush, but you also need two of the following characters on the crew, being Luffy, Roger, Marshall D. Teach, Buggy, Kaido, Lin Lin, Mihawk, Ben Beckman, Lucky Roo, Yasop, Bong Punch, Lime Juice, Monster, Hongo, Building Snake, Habu, Rockstar, and Uta. So any of the redhead pirates and then some of the emperors and stuff like that. I don't understand why Whitebeard's not there. I just, it breaks my brain that Whitebeard is not included on this list. Um, but I guess they were doing it from the death of Whitebeard. So there's that, I, I suppose. I don't agree with it, but look, we're here. We, we move, right? Depending on where you tap is depending on where he, what he activates at. If you tap first... It's going to cost you 12,500 HP, so very, very low. Tapping 10 times, just like Sanji, going all the way up to a 1.4 times attack boost for Psy, Cerebral, and Slashes. So you can do some really, really nice stuff there. And then he also finishes at um, a 0.8, exactly like Sanji does, for Psy, Slashes, and Cerebral. So fantastic array of classes 
as well as um, the side color. However, if you tap sixth, it's still only going to cost you 12,500. But you can tap seven times. The finished tap multiplier is three times, just like uh, gear five is. However, the rush multiplier is 0 0.05 instead of 0 0.1. And the attack is goes up by 0.1, but caps out at a two times attack boost, finishing at a 2.5 times chain. So this rush ability, tapping more, does more damage. It just increases that chain to then allow that three times to just hit a little bit harder. Essentially, he is just a better version of this guy when you are tapping last. And nine times out of ten, you are going to be building color-based teams when you are doing this particular final tap, rather than just trying to build out a rainbow team where gear five is just funneled into all your damage. Now, you can funnel the rest of your damage into your team, and then have this guy as your crazy final tap unit. It's absolutely fantastic. The downside is, is that he just is Psy. Like, Psy is the, Psy is the kicker, right? Psy doesn't have that kind of synergy of super tandem to move into for this guy to be just an absolute wallop for the final tap of the of the character plus he has so much to compete with and that's why he takes the third spot moving on down now i as for my uh second spot i have gear five the new gear five luffy and obviously <laughs> with that you guys will know what the, the number one spot is but i have gear five as a second spot is because he provides so much for his teams obviously as you can tell he's the only int character on this list to have a rush ability his rush ability is the same as shanks it's exactly the same however you just have different requirements of characters he has all the straw hats ace kid law yamato goldie roger shanks and sabo so he needs three of these characters on the team rather than two of these characters so he does need an extra requirement however the requirements are just a lot easier to get on top of that he works with the other two super sugos where shanks and ace don't work together but luffy can work with the two of them obviously with roger working with everyone but this ability goes for Int, Fighter, and Powerhouse characters, and does exactly the same as Shanks. If you tap with him last, he does that crazy three times multiplier. He has um, the self-rush attack of two times, and then adds the point one, tapping seven, seven times as well, which is very, very powerful. The reason I put Luffy just a little bit higher here is because you can do some really interesting things with Luffy and um, Vegapunk, where you can utilize the... The super tandem of Vegapunk to move into a, um, a rush ability of Luffy first. So you could say use Luffy as your rush character tapping as the first unit. Move into a super tandem and then utilize the final tap of something like Lilith. Uh, that's what makes him just a little bit more valuable in my opinion. On top of that, when you look at Rumble and Grand Party, having this guy's rush ability maxed out. It's just absolutely disgusting what he's actually doing for the team. Like he just, he hits so damn hard. Uh, with his GP burst in Rumble, he works really nicely. The downside to the character is that he just doesn't have that much support for Int. That's like the only downside to the character. And I think moving forward, he will definitely make his way up the tier list um, as the highest riser, where some of these characters here are definitely going to fall off. Obviously, with Luffy being the number two rush unit, Ace is going to take the number one spot. And it's crazy to think that he is, um, but he has a lot of help from what he's working with. The reason I have Ace so high is because of what he has around him. Free spirits are fantastic. Decks have a lot of support with great super tandems. They have great final tap abilities. So having Ace as your rush character for the first tap is very, very valuable. Now, he basically does the same thing that Sanji does. However, he does a little bit more... In the sense that he, I think he taps, what, 10 times and does 12,000. Uh, does Sanji do the same thing, though? Sanji, like... Sanji could possibly be just, like... Yeah, so Sanji's finish tap is 0.8. Yeah, Sanji 10 times as well. So, yeah, they're pretty much much. Honestly, I think I'm going to do this. I, I changed my mind. I changed my mind mid-video. Mainly because Sanji can basically do what Ace is doing as your rush unit. Um... And Luffy, like, not, not, nothing compares to what Luffy's actually doing in terms of the most valuable unit. So, I take it back. Everything I just said about Luffy, that's what makes him the number one unit. The number two unit is is going to be Ace. I do love Ace um, in a sense that um, his rush ability is going to be the most valuable per se. Because Sanji has to compete with Zoro Sanji on the team. That's kind of, like, his big downfall. 
But if you were looking at using a rush character, Sanji is just a, he's a great option to, to put in that spot. But like I said, Ace has a lot of support with, obviously, free spirit characters, with dex characters have good final taps. Um, but his rush is going to always proc first. And having two of the following characters on the crew being, obviously, a Luffy, Garp, Sabo, Roger, Newgate, Marco, Izo, Yamato, Otama, Lenaro, Skull, Mihal, Ganru, Gitatsu, and Cornelia. You can easily find spaces for these two units, they only being two as well, which is great. There's no other requirement like needing a recovery orb or anything like that. You obviously can use him as a final tap situation. That's what makes him better than Sanji, obviously. If you aren't using something like Yamato or Yamato and not using the final tap there, you could just, you could just use Ace's Rush and that's going to do a lot of damage. But obviously with the other options you have, it does make them a little bit less viable. So I'm going to put Luffy back at number one. Obviously with Grand Party and PvP, that does make him shine a little bit more too. Um, he's just a fantastic rush character, and obviously Gear 5 replacing Gear 5, it just makes the most sense in the meta, so, if I tricked ya, I tricked ya, honestly, I tricked myself, so we move anyway, but let me know down below if you guys agree, if you disagree, uh, let me know what you guys think, obviously, it doesn't really matter which order you guys have these three, like, they all do the same thing, um, they just do it for respective classes and colors, and I guess that's what's going to make them a little bit different from the rest. But like I said, let me know what you guys think down below. While you're down there, don't forget to belt the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Do all that good stuff. Most importantly, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, thank you all for watching. And I will catch you all in the next one.